Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the feature tournament number three, Group B, here at the One Nation Gamer Circuit. I'm TJ, joined once again by That's Admirable. <laughs> and we're, we're, ten, we're ten hours in, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun today. We had the, uh, the open at the Philly Comic Con early on today, we're broadcasting Group B here. We've seen a plethora of Control Warrior Mirrors, which makes Admirable very excited. <laughs> Like, it's what keeps me going. You know, every single day I wake up and I think to myself, ah, oh, geez, I mean, should I should I even really do anything today? And then I remember I could see a tank up mirror, and it gives me the energy to power through the day. Yep. Can't say the same, but I, I respect a man who can say that. But uh, <laughs> we're about to jump into the uh, the losers bracket match, but these guys, my friend, are no losers. It's Strive Crow versus Chess Dude on the verge of elimination from the feature tournament number three. Have to win here to stay alive. The rat is waiting for them in the decider match, but they have to get through one another. Shrevko goes ahead and bans away the hunter, and Chess Dude goes ahead and bans the way the shaman. Yeah, so take a look. Uh, Strife Crow's running with Cthune Druid. He's got his weird sort of Strife Crow grinder mage with Reno Jackson built into it, and he's got Zoo in his lineup. Chess Dude's got uh, Rogue, Shaman, and um, Nazoth Control Warrior here. So. Hmm. I'm trying to really think about how these matches line up, but obviously given Strife Crow with the weird mage build, um, we didn't see it get the job done in the last series. It was actually kind of his weak point of the lineup. Um, you know, I don't know how this set actually goes. I think Strife Crow's had plenty of time to recover from the the mistake he made with the Reno Jackson, where he had two copies of Roaring Torch in his deck due to Cabalist Tome actually giving him a second Forgotten Torch, which gave him a yeah. second Roaring Torch, and ended up Reno Jacksoning for at one life to gain zero. Uh, yeah. So he said plenty of time to to kind of let that fade from his shoulders, and I don't think it's really affecting him much anymore. But um, curious to see how his lineup's actually going to hold up versus Chestute here. Chestute having um, the Malagos Rogue, I feel like the Mage could be very weak to that. Um, and with having the Zoth Warrior, you know that that's kind of the the really tricky matchup where I'm not sure how the Mage is going to perform against it. You know, my instinct tells me this is going to continue to be the weak point of his of his lineup. Yeah, uh, Cthulhu Druid. Uh, probably pretty strong. Uh, maybe the Rogue will give it some trouble. Uh, but uh, Cthulhu Druid, they have, do have a lot of removal. They have that inevitability against Control Warrior. It's just they have to get that Cthulhu down. They have to get that pressure down before Nazoth is played. Or else, you know, they just don't have any way to come back on a big board like that. So uh, definitely going to have to see. Uh, judged by lineup, so I think got to give it to Chess Dude. Uh, it looks like he just has the better overall lineup. It's going to be tough for some of these decks from Strife Crow to line up. The zoo's really going to have to do a lot of work for him. He's probably going to get a pretty easy win with it, if I had to say so. But other than that, his druid and his mage might struggle against a few of these decks from Chess Dude. Yeah, kind of my thoughts exactly. And uh, again, the Malagos Rogue actually feeling like it's pretty strong versus what Strife Crow has bought, brought. Um, you know, the only thing I would think to say is that a lot of times when I'm playing against uh, rogues that I have druid in my lineup, Cold Bloods tend to be kind of a killing factor sometimes. When I just, you know, I can get a big taunt down and I feel like I'm safe. Yeah. Uh, they use a cheap minion to push through it with cold blood and then just keep the gas going with the auctioneer. Uh, with Chestu being more relegated to like Shiv and waiting for big Malagos turns, uh, I wonder if the pressure from Strife Crow could actually mount in that matchup and result in a win just by kind of playing minion after minion and Chestu yeah. kind of lacking on on ways to actually push through that. Um, so I think definitely in, in favor of the Rogue, but there are some scenarios where it can really struggle. And if there's one guy who knows his way around Druid, it's definitely Strife Crow. Guys... And kind of a, a big pioneer of this class and continues to play it every single time it's strong. Uh, we'll forever. see how. Yeah, forever. Um, we'll see how he ends up going with this one. But, uh, you know, obviously this being Conquest, uh, if either player is is picking random in their order, it doesn't matter. There's no advantage to trying to pick a certain class into your opponent's class. Um, and the chess dude with Nazoth Warrior, I think he navigated the Nazoth Warrior so very well in the series we saw. Uh, honestly, kind of really showing why he's such a strong player. I think maybe his class choices are being a bit limiting to him right now. You know, I think Rogue is in a pretty poor spot as far as the metagame is concerned. Um, but you kind of see that same thing on Strife Crow's side where you know players will play what they're comfortable with. And Strife Crow's always been comfortable with mage builds that are a little bit strange. Uh, wacky, if you will. And, um, <laughs> to, you know, both of them having that piece in their lineup, I think it definitely favors Chess Dude because of that Rogue. Wacky! With an H. Mm. Take take that, hockey. I'll tell you what. <laughs> uh, 
Well, getting close to jumping in the fir- first game here uh, between these guys. Uh, once again, if you're just joining us, this is an elimination match, which means loser of this match is out of the tournament. Winner moves on to the decider match to face off against the Rat to find out who's going to join Shoop as the player to move on from Group B to that playoff stage. And Rogue versus Druid right off the bat. The signature decks for both of these players. Yep. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, Druid's oh, yeah, definitely Mage. a big piece for Strife Cove. Mage is, yeah. Mage is really his signature. He loves to play Mage. Even when it's kind of bad, he'll, it feels like he always comes up with a weird Mage deck to run with. And a pretty strong opening hand with the Wild Growth. I mean, Wild Growth is really the big telling of this one. Harrison Jones kept in this matchup simply to try to uh, nab some more cards. Cameron fixed for both players now. And Chess Dude, um, you know, given Wild Growth, it's an important card in a lot of matchups. But in, against Rogue in particular, it's the most important card because staying ahead of them with the way that their threats line up, they're just so cost effective. Being able yeah. to stay one step ahead and forcing saps instead of getting sapped is a much bigger difference. And the fact that he's got Harrison Jones in hand as well means he's going to be able to keep the gas up. Uh, he's kept this card simply for the draw effect, not really worried about picking off a poison or anything. Mm. Uh, just because it very often is going to draw two cards in this matchup. Backstab, SI7 Agent Sap, Tomb Pillager. And there's that wild growth and lots of gas to work with for Strife Grow. He is sort of missing right now the uh, Cthulhu buffers, especially with Clax Amber Weaver and Twin Amps being in his hand. But you know what can make up for make up for that is double wild growth. Yeah, I'm curious to see if Strife is going to go with uh, the double wild growth here or just go with the pressure uh, and try to get going with the Harrison Jones here. I have like, once again, I've kind of noticed that. Wild Growth is just so good versus Rogue in particular. Again, just staying ahead of them and being able to keep their pressure down is a big deal. It looks like he wants to dig. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's playing on curve well enough here with Harrison Jones, Drew the Claw, and then whatever he's going to pick up from this. Uh, but Chestu's yeah. got a fantastic answer that SI7 in, with that backstab SI7 agent. So it's going to come down to whether or not Sh- uh, Chestu's pressure is going to be able to keep Strife Crow on the back foot long enough, I think. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, it doesn't seem so. Couple of different options here. Can Shiv and just trade in, re-dagger up. Uh, can backstab trade in and play the Tomb Pillager. Coin's going to be handy when we're uh, counting on that Gadgetan Auctioneer in a few turns. I could also just backstab SI, preserve both of these three threes, and push some damage. But you sort of miss getting this uh, getting this Tomb Pillager online. And it looks like he's just going to play it, keep the backstab, go face. Force Strife Crow to be the one to make the trades. I'm yeah, pretty surprised by this line. I'm really curious to see where this is going to go. I mean, Chess Dude certainly um, has his sh- his share of games on Rogue. And so I don't quite know what this plan uh, exactly is yet. I mean, just playing a little bit more conservatively and trying to figure out better better value lines. Uh, you know, that's definitely what it looks like right now. But to know what in particular he's thinking about, it, I'm really interested in that right now. Yeah. So it looks like just trade into Harrison Jones and pop down a Druid of the Claw here. Seems like the most reasonable option. That's what he's going to do. Still no Cthulhu buffers yet, so that Twin Amps not going to be online for quite a bit. Claxi Amber Weaver not going to be online for quite a bit. Bright side for Stripeco is he's got a lot of other options uh, besides those plays. So uh, Chess Dude faced with, again, another difficult decision. Keep in mind he was playing Malagos Rogue, as we saw earlier, so... Got to keep in the back of his mind. Do I win this matchup by gaining control of the board and holding on to it? Or do I win this matchup by being greedy with my burn spells and going for a big Malagos turn? Yeah, I'm really interested to see how he chooses to do this one. I wonder. In... He was sacrificed something somewhere. Yeah, he could just shiv SI7 agent and Earthring Farce here to trade in. Hmm. Or he could just sap? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the sap here at all because now he's going to have two minions on board. He's going to have Strife go down to 22 and the backstab Eviscerate is going to look mighty good here. This also gives him another chance to drop Preparation. If he draws Preparation in this spot, he's just going to blow Strife out of the water. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he 
he really sort of made the read that Shrepko's hand is super clunky. I mean, look at this. Shrepko has nine cards. And yeah. none of these cards deal with the board immediately, except for Drew the Claw in charge form to try and take out one of these three threes. But how much do you sacrifice in going for a plan like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the big story here is that Strife Road does not have two things to play in one turn. And that's part of the reason why the wild growth is so important is just to be able to get to a point where you can do two things in one turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's looking at, too. He's going to go with wild growth here and, and the Cthune's Chosen. So give him eight mana for the Cthune's Chosen, Claxi Amber Weaver, and then roll into potentially that to an Emperor. So this is going to be a much slower build here. And this is going to be kind of a window of opportunity for Chester. The fact that he's picked up a second Gantt and Auctioneer here, too, means he can feel free to kind of throw one of these away and not think too much of it. Just generate the advantage you can and, and keep going. I mean, like, maybe Shiv backstab is going to be better play and Shiv will get him a card deeper in the deck and then he will have coin and eviscerate with Gabs in next turn. And at any point he picks up a preparation in the next couple of turns, he could blow this game wide open. So Shiv it is. And... Picks up Azure Drake. So we can opt to coin that out and trade in, or even just backstab and coin Azure Drake, but then he gives up that draw potential from the Gadget and Auctioneer. Yeah, I mean, drawing immediately to get the Azure Drake on board, I think it's probably worth the uh, the give up for the Auctioneer. But again, it's it's going to be hard for me to pinpoint what Chess Dude's done here. I'm, I'm not easy. I'm more experienced on the Druid side of this playing against Rogue than the Rogue side of this playing against Druid. And Chess Dude, just such an experienced Rogue player. And it looks like he's even going to be conservative here just to dagger up. And this gives yeah. him such a good-looking turn with the Gadgets and Auctioneer. And look at this. I mean, he's already pl put on so much pressure as well. Uh, already has Strife Crow down to 16. And, I mean, this sort of has to be a Cthune's Chosen plus Ambi Amber Claxi Weaver and roll into a, a Twin Alps turn and hope that it sticks. Yeah, and damage. now this is a big opportunity. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage for Chesty this turn. But... Honestly, no no real effect, effective ways to deal with some of these minions. Hmm. I wonder. So he does have the double gadget sand, so he can gadget sand, coin, and evaluate. I mean, it might have to be, if he doesn't draw into another spell, he might have to just attack into the Cthune's Chosen and eviscerate that and push damage with minions on the board, bring Shrevko down to 10. But is there a better play in here? Do you want to just try and get more power online? Maybe even dig with Azure Drake and try and go with sort of the same thing. He's running out of time to try and figure this out. Yeah, this is and, a oh, and now he just doesn't have much time. Yeah, well, I think he anticipates just not being able to have much to do uh, after the after the coin and the eviscerate. Yeah. So this is obviously the damage is pointed at face now, but this is kind of the exact turn Strike Crow was looking for. You know, he suffers a lot of damage here, but able to answer this guy's in auctioneer, and then this is the Twin Emperor turn. Yeah. And I mean, Twin Emperor is so powerful. Maybe he's got something else in mind, but. I don't think there's anything else. I mean, you got to go for this. Next turn, look at this. His turn 10 play is actually really powerful. He can go with Druid of the Claw, which one will have to be in top form. And then he has the flexibility of playing the other one uh, in charge form. Be, I mean, just lots of options. The turn five drops are so strong, like when you get to the point of turn 10 and beyond. Just for the fact that you can play kind of double five drop. Rough spot here for Chesty too. He's got nothing but he's got no utility in his hand, and this is kind of where Rogue can really struggle is when they have all one or the other side of, of things. You know, they have all spells, no minions, or all minions, no spells. Mm -hmm. Blood, Blood Mage picked up, not going to help too much. I mean, this Twin Emperor and this Claxi are going to start shredding through this board and giving Strife Crow an enormous lead, and not really the reach from Chestu to overcome this. Just more minions. Yeah. Try to debate here about what to do, but I, I mean, his only real option is to just play Devin Van Cleef. Maybe he wants to try and play Blood Mage to cycle through, but I doubt he can afford to like use a preparation to try and make Edwin Van Cleef a six six. That just does not seem like appropriate use of resources. So, 
Blood Mage Thanos realizes that he needs cards ASAP. He's gonna go for it. This is bad news for Chess Dude. I mean, this quickly turned around. And it's a 10 10 Cthulhu right now. Uh, but I think Strife Crow can just feel free to build to a, a bigger board presence and then go from there. I mean, Do the you? only thing to really consider here is like Malagos Prep Fan. Or do you just Cthulhu? I think building the pressure and then having the Cthulhu act as a 10 10 charge is I don't know, probably the best way to do this. Hey, it is going to be Cthulhu. I mean, he, he sapped away. Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah. He saps Cthulhu and boom, he just play it again. Oh, Ooh, Malagos. And Prep Fan won't even answer this, though. Yeah, that's just, I mean, this is going to need some miracle draws from Chess Dude if he wants to win this one, but his yeah. draw did not pan out very well. I think he, you know. I think he played the early game pretty darn well, got a lot of damage in, but just had no follow-up. If he whiffs a spell with this prep, he's done. Shadow Strike. I mean, I guess you just gotta go for it. How does he live? There's a fan of knives, but... He's just facing on too much board pressure. Yeah. This has to be prep. No, it's not it. Chess dude. Strife Crow takes a very, very come, kind of come from behind victory in game number one here. His hand was super clunky, but that second wild growth, giving him the time to play uh, all the cards in hand he needed to play. And honestly, the Cthulhu, it's kind of a good point. I, I was thinking to myself, like, well, if it gets sapped, it's, oh, if it gets sapped, he just deals 10 more damage, I guess. Yeah, sure. It's not a very good mini to sap, that's for sure. Yeah. So, Strife Crow getting on the board with that Druid. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure I expected this, but uh, definitely after seeing the openings from both players, maybe a little bit unexpected. As Strife Crow at one point had like nine cards in his hand at 16 health with nothing on the board, staring at two three threes. Managed to find a way through it. Twin Emperors is just such a solid card. And now Chestu once again has to fight from behind. Hasn't managed to find a win. A single win so far today. Yeah, I mean, just his deck's not lining up, just not performing really well. And honestly, 